Hello and welcome to NSU Sports Beat, your official program of the Nova Southeastern University Department of Athletics. I am Mike Laderman, your wacky and wild sports information director, and with me, as always, the very good Dr. Pat Feely with this month a PhD in fantasy football. Pat, how you doing? Fine, Mike. How about you? I am doing incredibly well. Why am I doing so well? You're probably wondering. I, I am. Can tell, I see the look in your eye. I'm doing well because the Mighty Knights are doing fantastic. I mean, the men's soccer team just coming off of big wins against Flagler College and Life College. The women's volleyball team doing well. You know, right now a losing record, but, you know, they're starting to come together. And the women's soccer team, what do we got there? We got a lot of young girls who are starting to turn into some very good players right now. Uh, let's get into the, the women's soccer angle, uh, first of all. Talking about the youth, we've got a lot of young players, I think eight freshmen, uh, as we spoke of before, gracing the, the Knights fields now. Talk about that, Pat. Yeah. Eight newcomers, six which are getting regular playing time or starting. So it is a young team. How tough is that, uh, not just for them, but even for Coach Rebecca Utter? Well, it's difficult for Coach Utter in that they're only going to get better as they practice and they play. So the early season, maybe the record doesn't, isn't what she wants it to be, but she has to give them time to get adjusted to the system, get adjusted to know where players are going to be in certain situations. All right, this isn't high school anymore for these ladies, is it now? No. I mean, they're, they're getting adjusted to class time, practice time, maybe every now and then two a days, uh, traveling, which is another thing that we're going to get to later on in the show. This is a lot, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and they're doing well, and they're only going to get better as the season goes on. Like, I, after 10 or 15 games, they aren't really going to be freshmen. They're going to be a seasoned freshman who knows what's going to happen once they get on the playing field. All right, talk about though, the patience that Rebecca Utter has to have. I mean, yeah, usually I guess the typical college thing is you have about four or five freshmen coming in. You'll give two or three of them playing time, you know, maybe starting-wise. Another one you'll get in and out. But like you said, six of them are, are getting solid playing time. I mean, how's that working out? Well, she has to bear with the mistakes, the freshmen mistakes that they're going to make. And I, she knows that they're going to make those mistakes. But she also knows that they're going to get better. And as the season wears on, she's going to count on them even more heavily. And, you know, I remember early on in the year when they had the first couple of practices, I remember Rebecca Utter saying, you know, I, I could tell we're a young team. We have, we have a lot of work to do. And then at the end of those practice sessions, as, as we got towards the season opener, Rebecca was saying, you know, I think we're really starting to gel. Can you see that? I mean, can you see the girls starting to, to grow a little bit? Sure. Each game they play, they get better. And that is because they're more familiar with the system. They know where each other are going to be on the field. They know where they like the ball. They know, you know, what to expect from each other. Six of eight, though, getting a lot of playing time. Are they, so to speak, thrown into the fire? Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, they have, you know, they're, they're doing a lot. They're playing a lot. They're getting good playing time. They're really starting to, to know the night system, and that's been a big plus for them. We spoke to the ladies at the NSU soccer complex. Here's what they had to say about being thrown into that fire. No, I don't think we've been thrown into the fire at all, actually, because, uh, you know, there's six or seven of us, seven of us that start, and... Uh, Basically, we're making up the nucleus of our team right now, and uh, it's, I think we're adjusting well to it. Actually, it's been pretty tough. I mean, college is much tougher than high school. It's not easy, you know, coming to practice every day and working as hard as you can. High school is more like you just kind of loaf. Um, the college level is very more competitive than the high school level. Um, it's really more in-your-face competition than the high school. You have more team unity than you do in high school, and you kind of just stick together more. Well, my high school level was sort of high so we played against good teams but we also played with some teams that really were horrible but in the college level it seems to be more consistent. I guess we can be considered thrown into the fire but I'm not getting burnt because I love it and no one out here is just freshmen it's everyone is there is no classes we're just all one team and it's unity and stuff. The adjustment from high school to college is good you know it's a lot higher level here I think it's a lot more physical it's faster definitely but it's been good we work hard to adjust and going well, I think. We've been thrown in the fire a little bit, but it hasn't been too hard to adjust since there's so many of us. Um, yeah, we do have a lot of freshmen playing, especially in the defense, and our defense has been shuffled around with the injured goalkeeper and stuff. But um, we're getting better. They they have to start the building process. It's, it's always a building process, and these eight freshmen were brought in because I knew the contributions they could make later on. Um, this year they're making great contributions already, more than I thought some of them would make, and not as much as some of them need to make yet. Here's the thing, though. Yes, we have a young team, but, Pat, we're no longer playing a high school schedule. We've got a serious collegiate soccer schedule, don't we? We do, indeed. When you talk about playing Barry and Lynn, two of the best teams in NCAA Division II women's soccer, each year they're vying for a national championship. Then you throw in the University of North Florida, Georgia Southern, Rollins. We've got a, a 
real tough schedule. We're not making it easy for the freshmen, are we? No, especially when they're trying to improve their games, and then you're trying to do that against top-notch competition in a game situation. It's not an easy thing to do. So they've got to have pretty much nerves of steel, don't they? Yeah, they have to be real confident in their abilities. Well, we spoke to them at the NSU Soccer Complex about that same topic, and they seem to think that they do have nerves of steel. It doesn't worry me when other teams have seniors, I think. Uh, Basically, we come out here, we work hard just to be, as good, to be as good or better than they are, you know, and uh, I don't know, I think it's just all about heart, it's all about, you know, it's not about age, it's about talent, it's about desire, it's about anything but that, actually. Uh, going in with Lynn and Barry and all the big schools doesn't make me nervous at all. I don't think the rest of the freshmen are nervous either. I mean, we can all just click together, and if we just run them down, we'll beat them. We'll win. You know, it doesn't really worry us that we're going up against a lot of seniors with a lot of freshmen. We're, as long as we play our game and we get in our click and our rhythm, we'll do fine. I'm not too worried, because I think we're a good team. We have a lot of unity, and if we're playing our game, we're, we'll do very well. I think that you're only as good as your weakest player, so if we're going to be going in with the attitude that our freshmen are the weakest, then it's not going to be right because some seniors can be weakest. So I think that going in with a positive attitude, that everyone's going to be good. And whether you're a senior or freshman, I think that we'll still we'll be on top of things. A lot of young ladies on the team, but hey, they're getting a great college learning experience. And speaking of a great college learning experience, they're going to be getting some on the road, just like Dr. Pat Feely when he goes to Babson Park, Florida. Hey, we're going to hit the on the road segment of NSU Sports Beat right after this. time as a Junior Achievement Elementary School volunteer can be a little scary. Can you get kids that young to think about their futures? Call us about volunteering and you'll see. We'll supply you with training for this new program and the kids will supply plenty of motivation. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seized several tons of crack and marijuana, and closed down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. How much do your children know about AIDS? Do you talk to them about it? You're not sure if it's enough, are you? Of course, they're learning about health in school, right? Healthy lifestyles can be learned. Are they being taught? Now more than ever, your children need an understanding of what it takes to be healthy. Schools can play an important role. Call for information about how you can work with your school. Hey, welcome back to round two of NSU Sports Beat. Mike Laterman still here with the good Dr. Pat Feely. And Dr. Pat, let's talk about road trips because we've got a lot of them coming up, not just with one team, not with two, three teams, men's soccer, women's soccer, volleyball, all on the road. Mass chaos, I'm telling you. Almost. You've got the men's soccer team. They're going to go play in a tournament in Alabama. A few weeks after that, they're going to go up to Georgia and play the tournament at Berry College. You got the women's soccer team going to play Georgia Southern. Then a few weeks later, they're going back to Georgia to play the tournament in Bruton Parker. You got the women's volleyball team going to Alabama. But then you've got the other trips, the conference trips up to Weber and Warner Southern and over to play Eckert every now and then. So a lot of, a lot of time spent on the road. Daytona, Embry Riddle, Flagler, St. Augustine. My God, we're bouncing all across the state in the southeast United States. Geez, how do we do it? How do you do it? I mean, you're, you're Mr. Babson Park. You can tell us all about <laughs> Babson Park and Lake Wales, Florida, and how Weber and uh, Warner Southern is doing. But, but seriously, when, when we go on the road, it's not all fun and games, is it? No, it's not. I mean, it's tough on the kids to be away from home, away, f away from the familiar setting that you know they're used to. You get on the road, you ride four or five hours in a van, play the game, then the next day maybe you've got a morning walk through, but then you've got to wait, you know, five or six hours to the next game, so you can only watch so much game tape, so much TV, walk around the hotel, it's a lot of idle time. You make it sound a little horrid, you know, I don't <laughs> no, want to go on the road bad, now. But it, it, it could also be good though. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of fun times on the road. Yeah, and then once you get on the road too, you're, you're set on that game that's coming up. You don't have the distractions that you may have at home. 
Okay, so let me get this straight. It could be bad and it could be good. The class time too, you're missing class time. Oh, that got to be on the bad side. Yeah, you miss the class time, but then you take the laptop and you fax back your homework assignment or email everything back. So they try to keep up with the work while they're on the road. All right, Pat, is it tough or, or is it not tough going on the road? It's not that bad, but it's not that easy either. All right, well, we, we spoke to a, a bunch of the athletes, and, and yes, it's tough, and yes, it's not tough, and yes, it's tough. Let's just hear what the athletes had to say about the life on the road. The best thing about being on the road is just spending time with the guys on the team. You know, we really do bond because it's just it's just us. Actually, we I think we tend to tense up more since there's a way. You know, we don't have the home spirit of a crowd here. You got pretty much your life in a suitcase, you know. You have to... Uh, think about everything you need and sometimes you forget things. It's not that tough being away because um, you become family with the team. You um, you depend on each other, you know, you ask each other for favors maybe if you have a math test or some a guy that took calculus can help you out. You just it's it, they're there for you. Although those 13 hour bus rides can get grueling, uh, we do manage to find some time to do our work. It's fun. You know, you get to hang around with the guys, play soccer and study. You're an athlete but you still have to get the job done. Bottom line. On the road, it's hard. You bring your books, they stay in your bag. It's a lot of fun with a group of girls that are uh, pretty uh, funny. You learn a lot about your teammates when you're on the road with them all the time. Every weekend, you learn what they like and what they definitely don't like, and it can be real interesting. When we, co we come together, when we're on the road, I think um, we become like a family, we become like sisters. Um, it's kind of tense, but at the same time, it's, it's fun. It's great to be out there with all the girls. and. It's just real nice, it's like a big family. It's kind of loose and we have fun, but once we get off the bus and we're dressed in our uniforms and we step on the field, it's all seriousness. Life on the road's tough. Um, it's not too much fun to be doing homework while you're on a four hour road trip. It's, um, you gotta budget your time well and you also gotta concentrate on your game, so it's a tough thing. Uh, you know, it's not just the players though. Here's the thing, you got on the road, you take the support personnel such as myself or, or yourself going to Babson Park and, and Lake Wales or, or Mike Gerringer or Rafi Wynn, you know, doing the sports information work. Then you got the trainer's job with Teresa Bolesky and her assistants. And then you have, of course, the, the head coaches with Frankie Delgado with the men's soccer team and Rebecca Utter with the women's soccer team and Cheryl Morgan with the volleyball team. And then all the assistant coaches. This isn't just, you know, the players going on the road. This is everybody. It, it takes away from a lot of people, doesn't it? It does. And then you've got the coaches. They're also driving the vans. They're also, I mean, they're, they're ready to coach a game, so they're thinking in their mind what they have to do to get the team ready to play the game, and so it's not as easy as people think it is. I, I hate making it sound, though, like it's tough, because at the same time, it's not really tough. I mean, first of all, you get to get away from the office a little <laughs> bit, you know, just like the players get, get to get away from school, but you got to bring the work with you, too, don't you? You do, indeed, and then also, it's a good thing, a good aspect that we haven't really touched on. It builds the camaraderie of the team and the coaches getting away and spending that time together where it's only you and your team. And a lot of these coaches, too, have, have been there before. They've been there, you know, as players themselves. They, they've been there, you know, as the coaches before and as, as coaches here now. Is it hard, though? Is it going to be tough for them heading on the road? I think it'll be tough because we're playing top-notch competition. But for the other part, just going on the road, I think that they're used to it, and I think that the student-athletes are going to get used to it as the season progresses as well. Well, that's the big thing, getting used to it. And we spoke to the coaches as well, not just the players, but the coaches have to get used to everything. The coaches, like we said, they've been there as players, they've been there as coaches. Here's what they had to say about life on the road. Life on the road is a lot of fun. Um, it gives us an opportunity for me to be a lot looser with the kids. The kids get to see me on the loose end. Um, on the pressure side of it, I'm responsible for 21 kids two other coaches, a trainer, and a sports information person. Um, money, receipts, gas, getting there on time. So the fun part sort of overlaps that part, I think. Um, I end up enjoying it a lot more than I do worry. I think life on the road can be really good. I mean, as far as a player and a coach, what we did a lot is um, when we traveled to sightseeing. Like when I was a player, when we went to Brigham Young, we were there for a week, so we were able to travel and see a lot of Utah. When I was down in Louisiana, we went down to South Padre Island, spent a day out on the beach, went to Mexico and saw part of that. And so I always like to try to incorporate maybe a little bit of uh, sightseeing into the trips. Missed assignments, missed classes, missed work. It's mass hysteria when you're on the road, I'm telling you. And hey, we got more mass hysteria about life on the road right after this on NSU Sports Beat. Someone out there needs help, and you've decided to save them. 
Every year, thousands of people die waiting for organ and tissue transplants. To be a donor, even if you've signed something, you must tell your family now so they can carry out your decision later. Otherwise, it's like throwing a 12-foot rope to someone who's 15 feet away. Share your life. Share your decision. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. This isn't in the scene, because it's written in the book. Lung disease and other breathing problems are the leading cause of death in infants. But thanks to the American Lung Association's efforts in research and education, more kids are able to grow up to become what they were always meant to be, a real handful. Help us fight lung disease and air pollution. Call 1-800-LUNG-USA, because when you can't breathe, nothing else matters. One, two, one, two. Larry, you know, this simple exercise can help you stay healthy, which keeps medical costs down. But you gotta do it every day, Vince. Whoa! <laughs> or you'll get out of shape fast. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Hey, welcome back to round three of NSU Sports Beat. Mike Laderman, still here with the good Dr. Pat Feely. And Dr. Pat, when you talk about life on the road, you got to talk about interesting things happening. And I'm, I'm sure on some of the trips, you've had some interesting stories, and you're, you're laughing, so I already know what story you're going to tell. But, but go ahead, tell the story. Sure. Things happen. I mean, last year, the men's basketball trip up to the University of Central Florida, they gave us directions from the UCF Sports Information Department, and they thought we were going to go 95. They never asked. They thought we were just, they assumed we were going to go 95. Well, we went to Turnpike. So, of course, the directions didn't mesh, and the vans got separated. We had a 7.30 tip off. One van pulled in at 7.15. The other van pulled in at 7.20. Everybody's waiting, wondering where we were. But uh, the referees gave us a few extra minutes. Just started a little, get, little bit late. But stuff like that can happen. Happens all the time. Okay. And, and let it be known, too, that you said it was the UCF Sports Information Office that gave the directions. It did not come. <laughs> the NSU Sports Information Office. True. Uh, like you said, those things happen. And there's a lot of stories like that that happen on the road. And the players, well, they come up with their own stories, too. Things that happen on the road, let's hear what the players have to say. Road trip instance. No, actually, I can't. A lot of the times, I think the most interesting part of it is just some of the stories guys tell. You know, just think, can you imagine in, in a van full of 10, 11 guys and some of the story, a lot of, you know, exaggeration going on, you know, bragging and whatnot. But uh, I think for the most part, the, the stories people share, because you tend to open up a lot more when you're on, you know, stuck in a van for four or five hours. Road trip stories. Uh... Well, being a transfer, um, I was at UCF, Central Florida, and then I was also at NC State. And uh, on a road trip, actually coming down to play FIU, FAU, we, uh, we got one of the freshmen, we stripped him down, taped him up, tied him to coach's door, and then we also took him downstairs, pressed all the buttons, left him in the elevator, then we, when he was finally done through that, we put him in the lobby, laying down, and we put flowers in his hair. People have some fun with people when they fall asleep and stuff. Uh, it's all in fun, you know, like nobody gets upset. It's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to get revenge. It's just all in fun. One that we all think is probably our most funniest is that Sherry Waddell, our middle blocker for our squad, um, has a phobia of roaches. Here I am taking a shower and all of a sudden a roach is crawling above me on the ceiling and I scream and they think I fell or something. Her hair is filled with shampoo screaming and yelling, won't move, totally frozen, comes running out of the bathroom, begging Michelle Mertens to come in and get the roach. Roaches, this big. <laughs> Our Taterville story, and uh, that's when we were in the middle of nowhere and everything was kind of country and hick and we were kind of making fun of that. And everything was tater to them, so from then on everything was tater, tater this, tater that. We tend to um, initiate the freshmen, so they have it tough on the road trips. Um, we try to pull some great pranks on them and throw them into the pool while they're blindfolded and uh, just put shaving cream on them and different kind of things. Just do some bad stuff to them. We have fun like that. We're crazy.
Hey, that was your NSU Athletics monthly home calendar. Notice not many home events because everybody's on the road. And hey, this has been your NSU Sportsbeat TV show. For Victor, Steve Luchel, and the rest of the NSU Sportsbeat gang, I'm Mike Laterman. This is Dr. Pat Feely, and this has been NSU Sportsbeat. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Be good.